What's the best budget running pack? How do you fuel right at altitude? How can you power walk faster in ultras? Is fish oil worth using as a supplement? And what are the best running podcasts? Find out in my Q&A series, answering all your trail and ultra running questions. Hello, I'm Claire and you're watching the Q&A series on Wild Ginger Running, the trail and ultra running advice and inspiration channel. If you've got a running query, comment below and you can also try Googling your question along with the words Wild Ginger Running, which will bring up any other films that I've made on that topic. Useful, right? Before I answer your questions, I'd just like to say a big thank you to all my regular viewers for subscribing and liking and, and commenting on this film. And a big shout out to everybody who shared my films this week. Edward Jones, Sue Barrett, Happenings Health and Home, Running Renewables and Kath Evans. Thank you guys for sharing my films. That is fantastic of you. This month's Wild Ginger Running competition will give the lucky winner a chance to win £403 worth of trail running goodies. First of all, a pair of Trailblaze aluminium trail running poles from Mountain King worth £85, a silver Strive Light 10 litre running pack worth £91, a lead lenser head torch worth £145, and lastly, £82 worth of energy powder and gels from Morton, who supply the great marathon world record holder, Elliot Kipchoge. Support me here on Patreon to beat in with the chance to win. Now let's get going with the first question. Question one, the first question is from Sarah who asks about cheaper running vests than £80 that won't break mid-marathon. So I've reviewed the top 10 budget running packs in this film here. My two favourites are the Kalenji trail running pack from Decathlon, £30, and from Amazon there's the ANEG 10 litre running pack for £35 to £45. Then I noticed ANEG have a new pack out which looks even better than both of these. It's £42, it's called the ANEG 10 litre Professional Lightweight Cross Country Backpack. The link is in the description below. I've asked them to send me this new pack for review but from the photos and the details online it does look like this new one is made from softer fabric in the style of the Salomon Advanced Skin and the added Asteric Agrovic Speed Vest that I find really comfortable. You can find the Salomon Women's 8 set pack for around the £100 mark, last year's men's 12 set for £80 and the added Asmon for £70 online but this year's models are more like £120 to £130. With the price comparison, it's worth noting that ANEG pack does not come with hydration bladder or bottles, which will cost you a further 10 to 20 pounds. So do take that into consideration as the top end packs usually have these included. Even so, this 42 pound pack is almost half or even a third of the price and it looks really well featured. In fact, it does look like an exact copy of the very high quality, well-designed Salomon packs. It too has many a easily accessible pockets, a small zip pocket, a breathable mesh back, elasticated bungee chest straps, large main compartment, and it, it's hydration bladder compatible. It also uses a three-point compression strap at the waist, seemingly instead of a pocket, which is a nice idea for improving the fitting options as they only have S slash M and L slash XL sizing, but actually it does you out of a very useful side pocket on each side. So on the other hand, the Salomon Ladies 8 set pack has sizing options from XXS to XL, so you can get the right fit without losing those two side pockets. You mentioned quality and that is a risk you do have to take when buying a budget pack, though my friends from my running club have both these packs and they've been really pleased with the durability of both the Kalenji and NEG packs. So, so far for 30 to 40 quid, you could forgive these packs if you had to do a little sewing from time to time to keep everything attached. If you're worried about things popping off during a race, then take one of those hotel sewing kits and some safety pins and a meter of gaffer tape with you. So that should sort out most emergency kit disasters. For the absolute best features, my eyes are still on the Salomon Advanced Skin 8 set ladies fit, but for budget packs, NEG and Decathlon definitely give you a massive massive bang for buck. Links to all of these packs plus my reviews on them are in the film description below and hopefully they'll send me this new energy pack for testing soon. Question two, Jagdeep Singh is running the high altitude 72K car Dungler challenge this September from 11,000 to 18,300 foot, which is 3,300 meters to 5,600 meters high. He'll have 40% less oxygen than usual. What are my nutrition recommendations? Well, luckily for you, Jagdeep, I spoke to altitude running specialist, Carl Eglov, all about nutrition when I met him at the 4,302 meters summit of Pikes Peak in Colorado earlier this year. So Carl 
has just set a new speed record on North America's highest peak, Denali, beating Killian Jornet's 2014 record by a whole minute, so Carl knows a thing or two about running at altitude. You can get all of Carl's tips and the nutrition advice from all the other top trail runners on Pikes Peak in my Eat Like a Pro film here, but here is Carl's essential advice on nutrition at altitude. I think uh, hydration is much, much more important than, than nutrition, definitely, because if, if, even if you are eating a lot of carbs and if you haven't drink that much, um, you're going to feel weak. Definitely on altitude, uh, drinking is the key. Well, before the race, it starts three days in a half, and um, the day of the race, I would not drink that much, otherwise you have to go to the toilet. <laughs> and then uh, during the race, uh, drink as much as your body asks for. And how do you feel when your body asks for is like you're getting dry uh, lips or you're getting dry eyes, or it's like something that has to do with listening to your body. Um, People, there are people, they are sweating more than the others, so people have to drink more than others. Uh, I'm not that one, I'm, I'm not sweating that much, but I really recommend on a marathon like this to drink three liters for minimum, and especially on the, on the aid stations where you, you have 10 seconds to, to be there, stop and drink one or two glasses, uh, will help you definitely to improve. Uh, easy breakfast, uh, something that in your country is very famous, like porridge or, uh, or fruits or bananas or something like that. I normally plan every 30 minutes to take something into me, um, electrolytes or gels or a power bar, whatever my body is asking, and also changing a little bit with salt. Well, uh, celebrate thinking back of all the people in Ecuador, this time watching on television and uh, recovering is eating a hamburger or eating something fat because it helps to recover faster. <laughs> well, I'm not so fan of, of alcohol, but uh, one beer can definitely can be just for a toast. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you very much, Carl. You're very Fantastic. welcome. Thank you to Carl, and I hope that helps you on your high altitude race, Jag Deep. Question three, Bob Barr has just DNF'd a 100 miler at 40 miles and noticed that many people were walking much faster than him. How can Bob improve his walking speed? Jude also runs trail running holidays for all levels and she's a swim run coach too. So get in touch with her through her website for more details. There's a link in the description below. So here are Jude's tips for walking faster during ultras. Number one, Jude says you've still got to be fit to walk with any great speed. So you must put in those long distance runs in training before ending entering a 100 mile race first and foremost. Number two, be tactical about your walking because everyone walks on an ultra unless you're a top level elite athlete. So say to yourself, I'll walk briskly every slight incline, jog the flat sections and downhills and stick to that no matter what anyone else is doing because you may well overtake those people who are running up the hills later on. Number three, alter your mindset so you are in control of your walking. Don't let it control you. So this means rather than just running as fast or as far as you can, exhausting yourself and petering out to a tired walk, make assertive decisions about when and where you will either walk or run. Number four, improve your efficiency and speed up by getting your technique right. The same as you would do for running, keep upright, have a higher cadence with short, quicker steps rather than long, slow strides, and power yourself along with your arms too. Talking of arms, number five, you might try using poles to help power yourself along to reduce the strain on your leg joints and get into a steady rhythm. However, to use these, you still need to be fit with a strong upper body, so you will need to train with those too. So thanks for those tips, dude. A good combination of fitness, tactics, and technique should get you through your next long race, Bob. Good luck. And if anybody is struggling with a running injury or fitting in training for your next ultra, you might be interested in my Train for Ultra in three runs a week film here. Quick fire questions. Jonathan has had a bit of a knee stiffness recently and he asks if taking fish oil supplements or eating oily fish is good for the joints of an older runner or is it a myth? The short answer is yes. As nutritionist Anita Bean explains in the runner's cookbook, the omega-3 in oily fish, nuts, seeds, rapeseed oil, and dark green leafy vegetables improve blood vessel function and oxygen delivery to the muscles for better performance and endurance. And they've also been proven to help reduce post-muscle soreness, speed up recovery, and reduce joint stiffness. So there you go. Anita only recommends omega-3 supplements if you don't eat these things regularly. She also explains that you shouldn't eat too many omega-6s, which is linoleic acid, found in sunflower, corn and other vegetable oils as these reduce omega-3 uptake so try to use mostly olive and rapeseed oil in cooking. So to find out more and to try delicious recipes rich in omega-3s I do recommend getting Anita's book The Runner's Cookbook. The link is in the description below. 
Gear Tutorials has just got the 2019 Salomon Advanced Skin 5 set and notice it has loops on the back that will take bungee cord, but only very thin, two or three millimeter. Where can he buy some? Hi GT, the bungee store looks good quality. It's bulk buy options in rolls of about 10 meters that aren't very expensive. Maybe you could share the cost with a friend or ring them for an off cut perhaps. There's also quite a lot of choice on Amazon. If you Google two millimeter bungee cord, I've put some links in the description below. Hope that helps you out. In the past, I've also taken the bungee off another pack that I wasn't using anymore and used that. A friend might have an old pack or a charity shop might have some packs in too. I hope that helps you. Continuing the gear theme, patron Maruzia Asara Bakara asks what can be done to recycle old trail running shoes. So if they're totally gone, I put mine in a shoe recycling bank around the corner, but if they're not too knackered, I give them to friends with the same shoe size as me. I also asked you guys on Twitter and found that you donate them to charity, to ordinary charity shops, and to the Reuse a Shoe program at most Nike stores. David Hegarty suggests also sending them to Dan Lawson at Rerun Clothing. The link is in the description below. And Cy Brown says that Accelerate Running Store in Sheffield collect them and send them to an African charity. Galenith Smith over in South Africa wants some running podcast recommendations. Well, great news, there are plenty of entertaining ones out there, including Talk Ultra by longtime running reporter and photographer Ian Corliss, The Tough Girl Podcast with Sarah Williams interviewing the most inspiring women in adventure, Marathon Talk with Martin Yelling and Tom Williams, Free Weekly Time, the Park Run Podcast with Vassos Alexander and Louise Ayling, the Bad Boy Running Podcast, which is totally irrelevant and amusing. And finally, there's a new one that I'm in the first episode of, so of course I recommend it. It's the Totally Active Magazine podcast. Quite a few people have been asking me to turn the Wild Ginger Running Live athlete and expert interviews into podcasts so they can listen to them on their run. So I have been looking into this. When I've worked out how to turn an MP4 file into an MP3 file and worked out which hosting service is the best, I'll be on my merry way. But at the moment, I am super booked up working at races and festivals most weekends, so I'm getting a bit behind on the old editing. So unless somebody wants to volunteer their services, um, I can't see a Wild Ginger Running podcast happening anytime soon, unfortunately. But it's it's definitely something I'd love to make happen in the future. News, OMG, Lazarus Lake is going to be at the National Running Show this January. Laz is the eccentric American dude behind the Barkley Marathons, one of the world's toughest and craziest off-road running races of all time. Nikki Sphinx will also be there, see my interview with her after she completed one and a half laps of the 2019 Barkley Marathons here. I'm going to the National Running Show on the 25th to the 26th of January at the NEC next year, so I will do my best to get through the crowds to get an interview with Laz. What on earth shall I ask him? In other the news we've had some amazing record-breaking runs recently first up athlete and trail running coach Paul Tierney has broken the Wainwrights record running a 318 miles over a rough Lake District mountainside to bag 214 summits in six days and six hours that's like 12 back-to-back -back marathons in the mountains in less than a week conditions were less than perfect for Paul too with plenty of rain to make the going even tougher previous record holder Steve Birkinshaw was there supporting Paul for much of the way and record holder before that Joss Naylor was there to congratulate Paul at the finish. So Paul has raised a staggering £28,000 for Mind in memory of his friend, Keltman triathlete champion Chris Sterling, who sadly died this April. A link to the Just Giving page and the full story on Run 24-7 is in the film description below. And awaiting verification as I scripted this, Damien Hall has broken the Paddy Buckley round record. That's Wales' answer to the Bob Graham round. He ran 17 hours, 31 minutes of this 61 mile circuit of 47 Welsh mountains. If this is verified, he will have broken Tim Higginbottom's July 2009 time of 17 hours, 42 minutes. Anna McNuff has started her barefoot Britain journey and is currently running around the Orkney Islands with no shoes on, dodging sheep poo and eating M&Ms. The journey is taking its toll and it does seem like a very hard way to see the World. So let's give Anna some support for her journey on Instagram and on her YouTube channel with her updates. I'm looking forward to running with her in my hometown of Coventry in late, late September. I've been walking shoeless around our local field to see if I can run barefoot with Anna. But although that's fine and I have avoided dog poo so far, it's the small stones on the tarmac road to the field that really make me yelp. So I'm 95% sure I will be accompanying her with shoes on. Patron news! I hope you enjoyed our first patron meetup film last week where we ran the 25k at Keswick Mountain Festival together. Since then I've started an exclusive Facebook 
group and Strava pages for our patrons. And it's brilliant to see everyone come to life on there, posting photos of their running challenges and epic races. Here are a few from the Facebook page to inspire you. We have George Moss doing his first 100 miler. We've got Vanessa Wilson training for the Parish Walk in excellent running gear. There's Jodie Haggerty doing her first ultra. Steve Horton is doing some park run tourism in Canada. Kat Roberts was doing Race to the King. Simon Gerhardt ran 75 miles during Endure 24. And Pascal Mathene is still training hard for the OCC in August, a 55k race with 3,500 meters of ascent in Chamonix. Here's her latest update. Good morning. So when you're training for a race in the Alps, like the OCC, it's no better place to come and train than the Alps themselves. We are here in uh, Slovenia, in the Julian Alps. As you can see, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, but boy, it's hot. 8 a.m. and I'm already cooking hot. Thanks, Pascal. Keep up the great work. And finally, I'd like to give a special shout out to Rob Jordan, who only started running in August. Rob has lost four stone from his new healthier lifestyle and he is loving it. Well done, Rob. Keep up the awesome running and see you at the next meetup. The next exclusive patron meetup is Saturday the 10th of August in my neck of the woods. And I'd like to show you all around my local trails. So if you want to join us or you want to support me, get a wild ginger running buff, be entered into the monthly competition, take a look at my patron page, www.patreon.com slash wildgingerrunning It's question time. So last time I asked you, what's your ideal hashtag TEW, which stands for the easy way, your ultimate trail running journey that you made up yourself? Because I'm going to be running the 100 mile Isle of Man coast path over six days later this month. So we had loads of brilliant answers here, including David Jamieson, who plans to run across the Shetland Islands from north to south with a few ferry journeys en route. It sounds like a fantastic way to see the far north, David. Thank you for all your suggestions and keep me posted about your hashtag TEW adventures for sure. So this week's question is, what shall I ask Lazarus Lake from the Barclay Marathons if I can get to speak to him at the National Running Show next January? Let me know in the comments below and keep those trail and ultra running questions coming so I can answer as many as I can in the next Q&A. Subscribe if you haven't already, click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thank you for watching, thank you to all my incredible patrons, have fun, enjoy your run and I'll see you on the trails.